This episode of Innovate Fort Worth is powered by PNC Bank. Welcome to Innovate Fort Worth, the podcast where we highlight local innovation and the people bringing those innovations to market. I'm Cameron Cushman, and this episode is part of a special series that features the companies in the Techstars Physical Health Accelerator in Fort Worth. We are interviewing 10 companies who are continuing their journey through the accelerator and innovating in the field of physical health. Meet Fede Casas from Somos. Somos is a health app that supports Mexicans by giving access to key information to their health, particularly around tracking their real-time glucose levels. They combine personal data, information, and instruction to improve the overall health of Mexicans, where diabetes is one of the top health concerns. Fede, welcome to Innovate Fort Worth. Thank you, Cameron. Okay, so first, tell us how you came up with the idea for your company, and then tell us a little bit about the problem that you're solving. Yeah, so um, I think it came from uh, about 10 years ago. My dad had a health scare. I received a call, and he was having a heart attack. And he was 50 years old. He was very uh, athletic, uh, had a pretty decent diet. He was healthy overall. But he got blindsided by this illness. So... That got me thinking, uh, why, why was he blindsided? Why do we have a car that we know that's running out of gas, but we have our bodies and we don't know what's happening inside our bodies? If he had known what was happening inside, he would have known that even though he looked really healthy on the outside, his cholesterol levels were skyrocketing on the inside, that his metabolic health was completely unmanaged. So out of that frustration, I said, like, there's... We've got the technology now to see what's happening inside our bodies. Let's just put it to use, put everything, all of that information into one place so that we can see what's happening inside our bodies and prevent all this like unnecessary health scares, maybe even deaths. No, my, my father didn't die. Uh, he survived that heart attack, but that got me really inspired. And, and now, uh, a few years later, I'm 42, and I think I was, I also look pretty healthy, but inside my cholesterol levels are skyrocketing. My ApoB is out of whack. So then I'm leaving the problem of not knowing what's happening inside my body. So with the Somos technology and what we're doing, now I'm able to see how what I do, what I eat affects or impacts my health. Great. Well, so I know that uh, your monitoring glucose, I know that diabetes is kind of the first indication you guys are tackling. Yeah. How big of a problem is that in Mexico? It's <laughs> quite big. To give you a sense of how big, in the around the world, uh, diabetes is around uh, six to eight cause mortality. In Mexico, it's number two and sometimes number one, depends on how you measure it. Wow. So, so it's a way bigger problem in Mexico than most other places. It's huge. It's an epidemic. Yeah. People in Mexico are literally dying of diabetes. Wow. Yeah. And why is that? What do you, what do you think? It's a, it's a multivariable problem. Uh, first is culture. Uh, also, access to, to different food. Uh, in Mexico, anywhere you go, in the most remote areas, you have... Uh, sugar drinks and bread and all kinds of sugar and carbs and that's the basic diet of the Mexican so of course diabetes is gonna be at the top I love the name of your company tell us what Somos means so Somos is a word in Spanish that means we are so it's very straightforward and it's also a palindrome so it reads on the same if you read it one way or the other so we we like that <laughs> very good Okay, so you're tackling a big problem in Mexican health, but tell us a little bit about where you're from and how you got to Fort Worth. Yeah, so I am from Mexico City, and uh, I've been building startups for most of my professional life. And we've always known uh, Techstars as one of the top accelerators in the world. So when, when we heard that they had a, a physical health uh, program, we immediately uh, applied for it. And... And then we found out that it was here in, in Fort Worth in Texas, which is apparently, as a Mexican, I didn't know, 
uh, hub for uh, health and physical health, which is uh, really, really interesting. Very good. Well, welcome. We're, we're so Thank glad you. you're here and, and thanks for bringing the company here. So tell us a little bit about where the company is. Have you raised any capital? And if so, how much and, and what is that funded? Yes. So we started, uh, like many other startups, uh, two years ago, and we started testing different business models. And where we are now is a result of different pivots and different learnings. We're based in Mexico City, and we have raised close to $2 million. Very good. So tell us a little bit about, um, is, I don't think I fully understood that this was a thing until I got to know your company a little bit. Yeah. This uh, continual glucose monitoring, the, the sensor that people are wearing in the back of their arms, which I think used to be something that only diabetics had. Now it's become much more prevalent and people are using it just to kind of monitor their own health, health outcomes. Tell us about how you're using that technology and that tool to help uh, Somos and help the people of Mexico. We use several sensors and several wearables and sources of information. The CGM, the Continuous Glucose Monitor, uh, is our, our main one because it's the one that can give us the most insights in real, in real time. So the way it works, it's a, a really small sensor that goes on the most outer layer of your skin. It has a flexible filament. It's not a needle, uh, so it, it doesn't hurt when you put it on. It lasts for 14 days. And what it's doing, it's measuring your, your glucose levels in your interstitial flu fluid. So through, measure, through getting that information, it can, um, it can estimate what the glucose levels in your blood are. So it's a very, it's a very interesting technology. We do not develop uh, or manufacture the, the sensor. It is a sensor by a, a pharmaceutical company. And what we do is we have the technology to connect to that sensor, interpret the data, and then show our, our customers uh, all kinds of stats around their glucose. So how many peaks they have, uh, how certain foods affect their glucose levels, um, what's the average glucose. And we, we give the, our patients all of that information for 14 days that uh, each, each sensor only lasts for that for two weeks. And I've heard, I haven't done this, but maybe you can kind of tell us a little bit about this, that, I mean, literally you can see in real time when you drink a soda, when you drink a glass of orange juice, or you eat a cookie or something like that. What does that look like? And how does, what is the impact of, of something like that on our bodies? Yes, it's, it's very interesting. Actually, of, of the many sensors that you can use to get biofeedback, the CGMs have the biggest impact on habit changing wow. because you see you literally seeing the impact on your screen you see the graph going up so if you eat a salad and then maybe some protein you see your uh, glucose graph almost not move it's almost flat and then if you have a brownie or an ice cream or an orange juice then you see it spike and you see in uh, 20 minutes you start seeing how it spikes all the way up uh, so in in real time, you see the impact. So if I'm a citizen of Mexico, I'm wearing one of these glucose monitors, I'm a Somos customer, I see all this in real time. What, if, what kind of results have you seen from just reporting this back to your customers and your clients? We have uh, around 80% of our customers change at least one um, daily habit, one, one habit that they've ha they have had for all their lives by just seeing the biofeedback feedback once. So let's say you have an orange uh, glass of orange juice every morning and you see the spike. After seeing that first spike, 80% of our customers stop having that orange juice glass the next morning. That is yeah. fascinating. That is a really impressive way to change behavior. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. That's great. So, uh, so you are uh, here in this Techstars program in Fort Worth for the next few months. Um, what can our audience do to help you and to help your company? There's, there's two things. One, I've found that coming to Fort Worth and the U.S. specifically has helped us a lot because here there's a culture of supporting and promoting dreams and, high, and, and big vision. And I know that might sound pretty obvious to you guys. But in Mexico, is the opposite. Hmm. In Mexico, I had to water down our vision and water down uh, our, uh, our plans so that people would believe in us. But coming here is the all the, way, all the way around. Here you're pushed to think big, pushed to have bigger visions. 
So one of the things that, that they can do to help us is just keep us, uh, keep us alive by, by pushing us forward and, and allowing us to dream big and, and solving big problems. And the other one is if you know of any uh, angel investors or people who are really invested and really believe in our vision, we still have room to bring in as investors uh, small checks of very smart people who want to contribute to our vision. That makes sense. So you're looking for capital and you're looking for some cheerleaders, right? Yes. To help you uh, help you get to that vision. Exactly. That's, that's what you need as a startup founder. <laughs> that's exactly right. Fede, which innovator inspires you? I would say um, I'm really inspired by, by Nikola Tesla. Hmm. Um, he's a person that really knew how to think outside the box. Of course, a weird character and everything, but... Uh, he, he really knew how to think really very outside the box. And that really inspires me to come up with new ideas to solve problems every day. That's great. Very good. Fede, thank you so much for joining me today at Innovate for Worth. If you want to learn more about Somos, you can visit their website at somos.me. That's S-O-M-O-S dot M-E. Meet Isis Swain from Explosion. Explosion is a diabetes management app that supports teens who struggle with controlling their blood sugar levels. This platform aims to strengthen health equity through machine learning and real-time data analysis. They connect physicians with real-time data of teens' health, which helps healthcare teams be more proactive in managing adolescent diabetes. Isis, welcome to Innovate Fort Worth. Thank you for having me. So happy to be here. We're so glad you're here. So tell us, first of all, how did you come up with the idea for the company? Yes. So it was during the pandemic, um, which was the scariest part in anybody's life, right? But my father was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And of course, with anybody that had a chronic condition, it was very unlikely you would make it if you contracted COVID, uh, which led me and my mom to be present at every doctor's visit. One thing, uh, one visit that stuck out the most was the visit with the nutritionist. And so we're having this virtual call. And as soon as we get on this call, the nutritionist, they don't ask what food my father likes, what food is in the refrigerator, um, what foods do, does he uh, typically like to prepare. Um, immediately gets on the call and tells my 65 year old black father from Louisville, Mississippi, he should become vegan and he should eat kale. He that ain't gonna work. Right, <laughs> you and I know this. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Why she doesn't know this, yeah. I, I don't know. Um, but I have a lot more empathy for her uh, due to like the current system in healthcare. But um, my father looks at me and my mom and he's like, what is kale? And we had to translate like, oh no, she really means eat more greens. Hence our company, we're going through a rebrand. It's called Greens Health, um, but yeah, eat more collard and mustard greens. And so from that conversation, we realized that, that there was a layer of cultural competency missing, that the nutritionist just actually didn't have time to get a better understanding of what the environment was for that patient. And then also a lack of empathy, right? So asking somebody, uh, cause typically food is a sense of comfort for a lot of people, sure. especially for diverse populations. And so asking somebody to change their diet and behavior overnight, that was completely unacceptable and it uh, really invigorated us to do something about it. Okay, so you mentioned that the company uh, is going through a rebrand. Uh, mm -hmm. We introduced the company as Explosion. That's with an, it starts with an X, mm -hmm. but the app and uh, the company moving forward is gonna be called Greens. Can you tell us a little bit about that and, and why you decided to make that change? Yeah, so um, one, we wanted to, again, inject that cultural competency. We've been a company for about six years and we've made a pivot uh, as we focus on industries that we care most about. So background is electrical engineering. Uh, originally, we were doing uh, machine learning in the sports technology space. Uh, but since this pandemic and since this uh, pivotal issue that has changed my life, um, we definitely wanted to focus more on the diabetes space to help not only my family, but more families in America that are going after the same issue. So specifically with Greens Health, um, it is a SMS text service because one of the things in America that we're also contending with is lack of Wi-Fi, right? So Wi-Fi isn't available in every community yet, but there are innovators working on that every day. 
Um, so we wanted that we wanted to expand the capability for every person to have access to the technology that pr we provide. But there's also a mobile app com companion, and our um, our value proposition is broken up into two parts. One, it is providing care coordination. And I mention that because with populations, especially that are underserved and marginalized, uh, physicians and other clinicians will say, oh, patients are not compliant to my treatment orders. But typically there's some type of barrier that that patient is experiencing, whether it be transportation, housing, food insecurity, and things of that nature. So we, uh, we partner with third party vendors to close the loop to solve those problems. After that, we enroll them into an adherence program. And this is not just with the patient, this is with their family. So taking again my experience, not only did my father have to change his diet, as a family, we had to go under that diet change to really have a sustainable impact. Because of course, he's the first one diagnosed, but it's not unlikely that the rest of us won't be diagnosed with type two if we continue with that same behavior. Yeah, and there is a hereditary aspect to it. So exactly. if you're related, you're more likely to, to get it, especially if you stay eating all that good food that he likes exactly, to eat. Exactly, right? exactly. And it's just like those recipe modifications that we had to make, but also satisfying taste first. So when we provide those recommendations to patients and their families, we identify that first and we're not uh, advertising, you know, tasteless, healthy food and these bland salads that most, you know, nutritionists will prescribe. Very good. So tell us where you're from and how you got to Fort Worth. So I'm originally from Houston, Texas, and I got an introduction to Fort Worth through the Techstars program. And Fort Worth has been a beautiful city and everybody has been extremely welcoming and very nice and open with introductions. And one of the things that we want to do more of is just get immersed into the community because it's such a, as Techstars would say, give first community. So I think we're in the right spot. That's great. Tell me about uh, your co-founder. So my co-founder is actually my husband as well. Um, we met in college and I think as most, I would, I would hope that most co-founders start off is like you start working on group projects, right? And you start to see like, do I like this person? Uh, do they submit things on time? Um, do they contribute? And he checked off all of those boxes and he was actually very fun to work with, which is why I married him too. So I was like, it was a twofer. He is pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, he is. He, he brings a certain energy to this place, which is really fun. So. Always. Funky socks and cowboy hat is how you can identify him. There you go. Now mm -hmm. we know. Funky <laughs> socks and cowboy hat. So he fits in funky town then, exactly, right? Yeah, there exactly. you go. He's bringing the funk. I mm -hmm. love it. Um, has, uh, has Explosion raised any capital? And if so, how much? And what's that look like? Yeah, so we are split between 380 in uh, dilutive capital okay. and 370. $380,000. $380,000, okay. sorry. 380000 in dilutive capital and 370000 in non-dilutive capital. And so we've gotten uh, an NSF SBIR, Alabama Matching Funds, where my company is actually he headquartered in Birmingham, Alabama, as well as a Air Force contract as well. Fantastic. So you've been able to really diversify your funding sources to grow the company. Yes. And it has been incredible. Um, and not only do they give you the cash, but they also give you expertise, mentorship um, to expand on our intervention and all that kind of good stuff. And have you found that some of those non-dilutive grants are kind of a validator that you're on to something, this is a problem we're solving, they like your technology? Does And then what do additional investors think about that? Uh, Traditionally, investors love it, right? Okay. Because it shows that you're scrappy, you're willing to go the extra mile and put the time and work in. Um, but one of the things that I love about the grant process is that it teaches you how to think about your business. And especially when you do that budget, and you start to do that forecasting where it's like, oh, well, how much are you going to pay your engineers? What is the scope of work? It makes you really sit down and organize all of your thoughts um, in, into that uh, grant application as well as your intervention protocol. And so one of the things that's great for us is that we design for the worst case experience, right? Um, which was good because we have a grant application to refer back to as we start to deploy our interventions and our pilot studies. Very cool. Now, I know you're focused on the Southeast United States yeah. and, and diabetes, as we already talked about, but how big of a problem is this in this part of the country? So I think it's fair to say about 10 million of the 30 million uh, Americans in, uh, that are diagnosed with diabetes live in the Southeastern wow. uh, yeah, part of the country. Wow. So it is a huge problem. And we're not even talking about pre-diabetes. 
we're just talking about type two, type three, gestational, that whole realm. But traditionally, when we talk about innovation, as I mentioned before, um, that part of the country is left out. There are innovative solutions going on in California and in New York, but Texas, Alabama, Louisiana, it's like there it's an absolute desert, which is crazy to me. Um, but it also uh, depends on the policy, which is another thing that we're fighting for, too. And it's like the access to CGMs and access to innovative technology um, that south southeastern states typically don't get access to because of uh, Medicaid and Medicare policy. Fascinating. So what do you need the most help with in your company? Uh, and, and how are you trying to address that while you're in Fort Worth? So expanding our network. So again, my background is engineering along with my amazing co-founder. We are trying to infiltrate uh, the payer system. So it's a very tight knit community. They love warm introductions, which is why we're always at conferences to build that relationship, but looking for mentors that have, have experience in selling to payer organizations or have pre previously been um, a quality assurance manager, um, as well as like a star medication um, manager at these payer organizations would be helpful. Got it. So connections into insurance companies, essentially? Insurance, uh, Parkland, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas, uh, Texas Children's Health Plan, any of those health plans locally would be a great help for us. All right. Yes, you heard you heard the request. So, uh, so let's see how we can help you figure that out. Mm -hmm. uh, Isis, which innovator inspires you the most? So the innovator that comes to mind is Dr. Tonyan Ajayi. I hope I'm not pronouncing that wrong, but she is the founder of CityBlock. And the reason why I bring her up is that she pioneered the way on how to go after marginalized communities um, that typically get overlooked because they don't have the capacity to pay some type of subscri uh, subscription fee to pay for your service. And they've actually partnered with payers, which traditionally I haven't seen until them uh, payers do for those underserved populations. And for such a long time, as we were pitching our company to investors and ecosystem builders, they were like, oh, you should focus on, you know, high, high higher class uh, population that could afford your technology. But watching her navigate the space inspired us to stay rooted in the population that we care most about. Isis, thank you so much for joining me today on Innovate Fort Worth. If you want to learn more about Explosion, you can visit their website at explosionlive.com. That's X P L O S I O N L I V E.com. If you like learning about innovation in Fort Worth, please subscribe to Innovate Fort Worth and leave us a review. If you want to join the conversation, follow us on social media at HSC Next. Today's episode was produced by Kendall Rogers. Jamie Barnhart is our digital editor, and our videographer today is Noah Whitmore. Our technical producer is Rob Upchurch from Rob Makes Pods Productions. Innovate Fort Worth is brought to you by the HSC Next team at the University of North Texas Health Science Center, where we are driven to improve the human condition through a passion for innovation and teamwork. Thank you to PNC Bank for supporting innovation and entrepreneurship in Fort Worth.